I'm excited to talk to you because you have this revamped version of your beautiful song, I Am, is the new version that's out right now. Talk about who were some of your musical influences going back to when you were growing up, though, and where we've come so far. Sure. Um, I grew up, got on, on so many people. My mom is such a um, avid like music fan, so I grew up on people like Aretha, Whitney Houston, Journey, The Cranberries, George Michael, Brian McKnight, oh my God, The Temptations, a lot of Motown, people, Bryson. She always had just like an eclectic array of music going on in the house on like vinyl records and cassette tapes. So I was able to just kind of like, just kind of get lost in her catalog. Well, there's some beautiful influences clearly in the music you make now, and I can feel them. And certainly they're ever present with the music that you've made in the past as well. We've got this new version of I Am Out Now, which is based off a track that was on your EP, I Am Who I Am. Why was now the perfect time to sort of revitalize this song, remix it even? Um, I think because I realized over the years when I kept singing that song at every one of my shows that it was so relatable, even though it's a very personal story to me. I think a lot of people can relate to struggling to find out who they are as the years go by and wanting to get back in touch with like, that little kid inside that I think in, inspired and like had those big dreams and stuff before the world sort of like, you know, pushed you down or put you in like a corner or a box. Um, so I, I, I was listening to it on the treadmill in January and I was just kind of going through like my old catalog. I don't know why I just felt like, what, let me just look, hear how I sounded back then. So, I, I don't know. For some reason, like new year's Eve in the beginning of a new year kind of becomes really reflective and nostalgic sure. for me. I don't, Maybe for a lot of people, I can get to that way too. And I typically don't like going back in time, even with like old photos and stuff. I'm just kind of like, meh, that, you know, that's the past onward and upward. But when I was listening to it, I was like, God, I am who I am. And still, even though I wrote that song in 2005, which is like almost 20 years ago, I still feel like it's the message is like still really like clear and still really applicable to my life. And apparently, to other people as well, because people have loved the the revamp version of it. And I just, I kind of, I wanted to know what I would sound like now, 20 years later, singing that same song, with, but like updating the beat and adding a choir to it and updating some of the choices I made vocally. And so it was just kind of, it was really fun kind of getting in there and like, it kind of brought me back a lot actually to, to just me being in the studio recording that song initially. It was, it was the first song I had ever really recorded professionally. Wow. I, I was going to ask you, was it your idea to add the choir in there? Because it's so beautiful and a part of the song that really, I think, makes it unique, this version. Yeah, no, thank you for that. I appreciate that. I wanted something to be different, but also to be the same. And I think when I reached out to my original producer, who actually was on the first album, I Am Who I Am, my very first album that I released in 2012, Alex Teamer is his name. I reached out to him and I was like, yo, what do you think about us like redoing the song? And he's like, yeah, I think that'd be dope. So he sent me over a version that had that ending in it, but it wasn't it wasn't like obvious that you should put a choir in there. It was just musically, that's kind of where the song lent itself. So I was like, let me just try stacking my vocals like hundreds of times on top of each other with like wow. lows, highs, mids. I, I would use different textures and I just had like, I mean, if you see my session, my my recording session, it was just like, it was so long because I was just like, oh, I am. And I was doing that with high, low, mid harmony, like raspy voice. Like I was just trying to make it sound very like all different types of voices. And then I sent it off to to be mixed. And my producer, Push Cologne, he like made it sound so wiry. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's that's pretty cool. I didn't even have a real choir in here. But th <laughs> there's really cool things you can do with modern technology. Oh, yeah, you loop and, and everything. I mean, Ed Sheeran sits there at his concert and he'll loop like half the song and it just like makes it a whole other level. This one, I think, um, absolutely makes it such a standout and it's perfectly um, unique in that way as well. Thank and, you. Uh, I have Thank to you. Ask, I forgot Ed Sheeran did that. Yeah. yeah. I have to ask what kind of response have you been receiving to this new version from your fans? It's been a really, I mean, it's been, it's been like, a. I want to say I released it on the 31st, so it's been... 12, 12 whole days and uh we're at like twelve thousand views on the video link and that's just as an independent artist as we all know like it's really hard to get traction without like a massive team behind you and stuff so this is all like grassroots and 
I've been very grateful to have some incredible fans over the years. I've, I did a show in Canton, Ohio this past Saturday and it was all like young people in the front. We had like, I mean, I would say anywhere from like 10 years old up until, you know, up until like however old, but like the median age was somewhere around like 20, 21, 22. And I was just really pleasantly surprised at how much the song resonated with them. I've had, I had so many tags on Instagram and then I had people slide into my DMs and they were like, you don't have any idea how much this song means to me. I grew up with a single mom. I had a really rough childhood. You know, we didn't come from much. And so you'd be surprised, like, you know, that top 1% of rich people, again, is only 1%. So a lot of us, 99% are going through some trials and tribulations on a daily basis that that we just don't talk about, which I think the I am, I am and other songs like that that other people have released kind of like opens up that conversation where we can all be like oh my god yeah that's right like i used to sing with the remote control in the shower or or not in the shower but like remote control no don't don't sing with the remote don't sing in the shower with the remote control, remote control. control. Don't hair brush that, like, a shower bottle something like that <laughs> yeah but yeah a shower bottle or like you know just this when you would like make believe just to kind of like escape some of the things that were going on that your parents were trying to like shield you from, but like as kids, you're really smart and you like see all that stuff. So, you know, I think, I think I am like years and years later after recording, it, I look back and I'm like, Oh, like I wrote that when I was, when I was like 20 years old and I was, ref I was so reflective at 20 years old. Like that's crazy. Video is just absolutely amazing. And I know you co-directed it with Johnny D and it plays into yeah. I think, the song so beautifully, the message behind it and, everything what was it about you know this polaroid image and the mickey mouse shirt that really truly embodies the song and the message you've created for it yeah thanks i for the question i honestly when i my mom sent me so she always sends me all these like little kid photos and stuff she'll be like digging my mom's a pack rat so she has like all these boxes of just like old memorabilia and she'll just like send me a picture with her phone and for some reason out of all the photos she sent me, that one just kind of captured the essence of the song. I just thought, look at you, like you're sitting there missing teeth and your little Mickey Mouse shirt, so innocent. I look a little mischievous. I look happy and I look like no one could tell me nothing. Like the world was just like not quite affecting me at that moment, you know? And I, I don't know, the photo for some reason just looked really, really innocent, like just innocently me. And I remember... Uh, my mom telling me that I loved Disneyland. Like I loved just like the make believe and Mickey mouse. And that was like one of my favorite shirts. And so I went online and I dug a little bit. It took me a minute to find this vintage shirt, but I found it and I ordered it. And I, this is before I even knew what were the concept of the video was. I just ordered it from Amazon. I'm like, I don't know. It'll arrive. We'll do something with it. <laughs> okay. And, and, uh, my Johnny D, my my videographer and producer, he was like, send me all the stuff your mom sent you and I'll also do some digging. And I was like, cool. And I also bought this Mickey Mouse shirt. He's like, that's cool. Bring it to the shoe. So when I got to the shoe, he had, there was this huge cyclorama wall and he had a projector and he showed me all the compilations of everything I sent him. And I just started crying. I, I was like, oh my God, like, <laughs> yeah, I, I did. You know, and I think partly because you forget how many cool things and how many memorable things you've done as you keep going through this journey of trying to reach your goal and you don't stop to like smell the roses. Sure. And I looked at it and I was like, holy, sh like I <laughs> have been doing this for so long and I've created such incredible memories. I hope that this next chapter of my life, I can actually be more present and like live in those moments. So that was kind of where, and then I was like, let's put on the Mickey Mouse shirt and like have me looking at myself in a Mickey Mouse shirt like how cool would that be and I and, and to this day like when I watch it I get goosebumps because I'm like that is so damn cool that you were able to replicate that you know x Moment amount of years time. later yeah oh my yeah. goodness yeah so was, um, and then my mom's voicemail in there was like a <laughs> that you was know, a also <laughs> something I was like I was like, yeah, this is special. And I, I had, I thought I had saved a lot of her voicemails but I had to go back. I saved that one for some particular reason and it was in my emails and I brought it up and I'm, I was thinking like Christmas, that's really special. Like, I don't know, like at my age, like for your mom to still be like, I just want to see what you want for Christmas. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like my mom just I'm forever, like her baby. So that's, yeah, that was really special to add that in there. 
is this a prelude then to maybe more singles that you're releasing soon or uh ep an album in the works yeah and i god everybody keeps asking about the album and it's just like it's not that I'm lazy. It's not that I don't want to make an album, but sometimes I feel like who cares? Like, I don't, you know, like we're in such a like single based culture of, of just like single releases and visuals and stuff like that. And, you know, when I put out Don't At Me back in March of 2022, I, one of my most personal albums, but I still feel like it wasn't appreciated the way that I thought it would be just because I was so raw and so real. And I wrote every single lyric in that and I produced the music and, it, it just became like this industry knocks you down so much as an independent artist. You don't see immediate gratification. A lot of times it's somewhat thankless a lot of the time. So a new album. Yeah. I want, I want to create like a really dope body of work. And I've been influenced by a lot of different sounds lately, different sounds than what I've nor normally recorded. Um, but I do have two new music videos coming out next month and we're having like a triple music video release party. Ooh. And um for my song for my song vices and my song special that were on the last album don't at me so that'll be a lot of fun we're gonna have a live band performance and red carpet and stuff like that so i i definitely am creating creating things um and then the album's gonna probably be like a slow burn i would say like sometime sometime next year but i just i have to like sit in it and give it inspiration time you know i'm curious then to find out if there's any collaborations in the works or maybe someone you would love just as a dream collaboration in the future. Oh my God. Yeah. There's so many people I would love as dream collaborations for sure. I mean, I, I really love, like, I love James Blake. I love Billie Eilish. I love, um, I mean, there's certain DJs like Kygo and Diplo that I think are incredible that I would love to collaborate with. And um, I would love to produce and write for other artists as well. I think I have, a, I think I'm really great about being an empath and taking people's stories and making them melodic. So that would be, that's another dream of mine. And I, I you know, I, I feel like there's like a new page being turned. So the, the opportunities and like are just kind of boundless, endless right now. What would you like to yeah. say then to everyone who are fans and supporters then of the incredible music you continue to make over and over again? You have these standout songs. It must mean so much to you that so many people relate to them and continue to reach out and tell you how much they appreciate the art you make. Yeah, I would just say thank you. I mean, I, you know, I, I did a, a bunch of live streams during the pandemic. I did like 70 plus live streams and I got to really, really connect with people that normally wouldn't be able to make it to a show in person. And that was really interesting starting off with the live streams because you don't really get applause or claps and stuff. You just get like comments or like thumbs ups or hearts and stuff. So that was interesting. But I did realize and during that time that I have so many different people that appreciate my art across the globe that just because they're not in person doesn't mean they're not out there and you see that by like the streams and the reshares and the, and the likes and stuff on social media so i would just say thank you for that and i hope that you can tell me tell me what you want like tell me what are things that you that i've done in the past that you would love to see more of that way i can you know because i mean i create this for myself but also for you so i'm i i take opinions and and critiques you know very seriously <laughs> 